Hello all. Today we will discuss Commonwealth period. Commonwealth period in English history extended from the end of the Civil War and the execution of Charles I in 1649 to the frustration of the Stuart monarchy under Charles II in 1660. The period is also known as the Puritan Interregnum. In this era, England was ruled by Parliament Oliver Cromwell and then briefly by his son Richard Cromwell until 1659. After the initial defeat of the royalist armies in the civil war, many parliamentarians wanted to make peace with King Charles I. In December 1648, under the orders of the army council, Colonel Thomas Pride prevented these MPs from entering parliament. Some of these were simply barred and others were placed under arrest. This was known as the Pride's Purge. The remaining members of parliament formed what has been called the Rum Parliament. The Rambo was much more amenable to the army's demands and voted in favour of the trial and eventual execution of the king. England was declared a commonwealth under the rule of the Rum Parliament. It abolished both monarchy and the House of Lords. This is the period when there was no monarch in England. Charles' family had already fled to France and his son Charles II didn't come to throne until 1660. Instead, Oliver Cromwell who had been the head of parliamentarian army, came to power. In 1653, Oliver Cromwell dissolved the Ram Parliament and assumed the title Lord Protector of the Commonwealth of England, Scotland and Ireland. In English history, Protectorate is the name given to the English government from 1653 to 1659. Cromwell's Protectorate was a virtual dictatorship resting on the power of army. He divided the country into 11 military districts, each under the administration of a major general who enforced the puritanical laws and collected taxes. The social reforms carried out during the Commonwealth period were puritanical in character. Festivals like Christmas, Easter were condemned. Attempts were made to prevent traditional social activities. Popular sports such as wrestling and horse racing were outlawed. Cromwell's mission was to create a godly society by eliminating all evil. Cromwell died at the age of 59 in 1658. His son, Richard Cromwell, succeeded as Lord Protector, but he lacked the support and reputation of his father and was incapable of commanding the same level of control over Parliament and the new model army. Losing control over the country, Richard Cromwell resigned in May 1659, leaving the Commonwealth with no clear leadership. This provided Charles II, the heir apparent to the throne, who had been living in exile, an opportunity to return. The monarchy was restored in 1660. Puritanism had an adverse effect on literature. Theatres remained closed throughout the period of the Cromwellian Commonwealth and reopened only after the restoration of Charles II in 1660. Poetry was seen as good only when it talked about God or holy stories. The metaphysical strain in English poetry continued into the Commonwealth period. Dramas disappeared for almost 18 years after the Puritans closed to the public theatres in 1642, not only on moral and religious grounds but also to prevent public gatherings that might create civil disorder. It was the age of Milton's political pamphlets, Pope's political treatise, Andrew Marvel and Henry Vaughan also continued their writing. John Milton was preeminently a poet but from 1640 to 1660 he devoted himself chiefly to the writings of prose works which established him as the most able pamphleteer of his time. Milton's Areopagitica, a speech for the liberty of unlicensed printing, is probably the most famous of his prose writings. It is a forceful and eloquent plea for the freedom of authors and publishers to print and publish. By an ordinance in 1643, June 14, it was rendered obligatory on the order of a new publication to get the license of the commissioners before such work could be issued. In his writings, Milton supported the parliamentary cause in the civil war. On the execution of King Charles I, Milton was the first to lift up his voice in defence of the deed. His pamphlet on the tenure of kings and magistrates was of such a timely service to the Commonwealth. It deals with constitutional Christians and particularly the rights of people against tyrants. In 1649, he was appointed as Latin Secretary to the Council of State by the Government of Commonwealth. He fulfilled his government duties until restoration in 1660. During restoration, he was punished for his support of parliament by a fine and a short term of imprisonment. 
Thomas Hobbes was a political philosopher of the period. His most famous work is The Vedan, a classic of English prose. Hobbes composed the book during the English Civil War. The book explores the political philosophy in a world of violence and horror. It covers the complex subjects of politics, religion, violence, crime and war. Jeremy Taylor was a priest and writer of the period. His best known works are the devotionals, the rules and exercises of holy living, and the rules and exercise of holy dying. Both are sermons in prose. Andrew Marvel is one of the metaphysical poets. He is associated with John Donne and George Herbert. Marvel served as a tutor in the families of both Fairfax and Cromwell. From 1657, he served with Milton in Cromwell's department for foreign affairs. In 1659, he was selected as MB for Hull. His best poems were written during the 1650s. Marvel's To His Coy Mistress was published posthumously in 1681, but it is speculated to be written sometime near the end of the civil wars or during early days of the Commonwealth. Another famous poem is The Garden. His other poems include an oration on upon Oliver Cromwell's return from Ireland. It was written in 1650. There are also other poems on Cromwell. The first anniversary of the government under his highness, the Lord Protector, in this, Marvel is clearly appreciating Cromwell's government and personality. This series of Cromwellian poems poses with a poem upon the death of his late highness, the Lord Protector. The development of his relationship with the Lord Protector is marked in several poems Marvel wrote at that time. Henry Vaughan is a religious metaphysical poet. The major poetry of Vaughan was published in 1650 and 1655 in the two parts of Silex Indolence. Some of the best poems in it are The Morning Watch, The Retreat, Childhood, Peace, etc. He was greatly inspired by John Dunn and George Herbert. We have completed the five subdivisions of the Renaissance spirit. In the next history video, we will move on to a new age. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.